Bitcoin has a fixed supply of 21 million Bitcoins. This hard-coded rule controls supply, purchasing power, and helps avoid the potential misuse of printing more and more currency, which can contribute towards inflation. Did you catch it? This is from BlackRock's latest Bitcoin explainer, and it's had a lot of Twitter in flames. Let's go back to the frame in question. Here, while BlackRock is explaining the benefits of Bitcoin's 21 million coin supply cap, they sneakily place in this text here below, reading, There is no guarantee that Bitcoin's 21 million supply cap will not be changed. In this video, we're going to go over what Twitter is saying about this, why BlackRock is wrong, and what you can do to help protect the network against dilution of the currency. So jumping right into Twitter, this guy Steve says, you really think your little node running on a Raspberry Pi is going to prevent BlackRock from uncapping the supply of Bitcoin? Oh yes, they will deeply care if you fork yourself off the network. I want to tell him, why would node runners who presumably own Bitcoin dilute themselves? Meaning, if I owned one Bitcoin out of 21 million, why would I agree to own one Bitcoin out of 50 million? I'd just be diluting myself out of my position. So I tell him he's not just wrong, but he's stupid. Uh, Pierre, who's a bit nicer than I am, goes on to explain to him that um, Bitcoin is decentralized and there isn't a single authority that can provide the guarantee of uh, the supply cap. But then he goes on to say, you can self-guarantee by running your own node. And this is something that I talked about in my last video uh, where I was explaining what nodes do. So just a quick recap of that. The Bitcoin network is just made up of a bunch of little nodes here. So each box here is supposed to be a node. This is my node in the living room. And this is just the rest of the network. So you can imagine the rest of these guys are spread all over the world. These nodes or this collection of nodes is the Bitcoin network. So right now, the Bitcoin network, we all say there's only 21 million coins. And in this way, because I'm using my own node to uh, interact with the network, and I know that my software is based on the 21 million coins, um, so this way, I can self-guarantee that my coins will not be diluted. And everybody else who owns Bitcoin is probably thinking the same thing, because why would they ever want to dilute themselves? Steve seems to have this all backwards. He seems to think that BlackRock can determine what software is being run on all these nodes. And through that way, they can decide um, what is the real Bitcoin network, right? So he's basically saying that BlackRock can, can just up the number of coins, which is really not true. Um, he goes on to say that we're going to be forking ourselves off the network if we decide to keep the 21 million coins, or at least that's what he's applying here. But uh, Pierre is actually correct here, and he says the opposite is true. If you try to increase the 21 million supply cap, you would be forking yourself off the network. The network right now, like I just said, is made up of the 21 million coin rule. So by changing that and by running a new node with new rules, you will be basically starting a new network, which is not the same as Bitcoin. We can stop and go look at Bitcoin Cash, which is a fork of the Bitcoin network where they wanted something else. They they thought Bitcoin should have faster block times and they thought Bitcoin should have bigger blocks. So what did they do? Uh, once they failed to actually change Bitcoin, they said, OK, we're going to create a fork and we're going to create our own version of Bitcoin. And how has that worked out? Well, uh, we don't look at Bitcoin Cash as a real Bitcoin. We just say it's a failed fork of Bitcoin. And we know it's a failed fork because when we look at the action that's happening on the chain, uh, the left side is Bitcoin, the right is Bitcoin Cash. There is nothing going on on Bitcoin Cash. It's actually quite pathetic. Um, and these guys still think that they have the real version of Bitcoin. You can scroll down, you can see there's nobody waiting in line to get into a block in, in Bitcoin Cash. And uh, Bitcoin is, is packed. Everybody's waiting in line to use the real Bitcoin. You can also tell that Bitcoin Cash has failed by looking at its price performance against Bitcoin. So this is Bitcoin Cash over Bitcoin. When this line goes down, that means Bitcoin is outperforming Bitcoin Cash. And we can scroll all the way back to its inception and we can see that Bitcoin Cash has done nothing but lost value um, against Bitcoin. So had you owned Bitcoin Cash versus Bitcoin, the real thing, you'd be down 97% against your Bitcoin. So that's actually really sad. So now knowing this, if BlackRock were to decide to, uh, like, let's say they were to push this whole new agenda that they want to increase the coin cap, they would just be creating a new version of Bitcoin, which is probably going to look something like this after some years pass. 
it's important to to remember that Bitcoin is not just a computer network, but it's an idea. It, it's a network of minds, right? And everyone who's in Bitcoin, we all know that there's only 21 million coins, and that's part of the allure to it. So that's something that's never going to change. I made a video on this a month or so ago, and it wasn't very popular talking a bit more about how Bitcoin Cash is a failed fork. So um, feel free to check that out. But here's one of the comments that I got, and uh, this guy is a Bitcoin cash shill. He's basically, um, you know, aside from talking about bimetallism, which is um, kind of stupid, he goes on to say that Bitcoin cash devs can fix the potential uh, vulnerability caused by quantum computers, but we don't have devs who can fix Bitcoin. That's just that's just wrong, right? Why why can't devs work on Bitcoin? Is <laughs> I just don't get it. And he says also the Bitcoin cash network is faster and fees are lower. And while he's right in saying that the Bitcoin Cash network is faster and lower fees to use it, he's wrong in understanding that no one wants to use Bitcoin Cash because it's not nearly as secure, right? If we go to howmanyconfs.com, we can see how many confirmations um, a Bitcoin Cash transaction needs to equal um, six confirmations of one Bitcoin transaction. So... If you wanted the if you wanted the security of six confirmations of Bitcoin in Bitcoin Cash, you'd have to wait approximately thirteen hundred and two confirmations. So that's two hundred and five times slower than the real thing. So this is something that these shills fail to realize. Yeah, it's faster to get into a block, but that block is not as secure as the blocks being built on top of Bitcoin. So there's actually no other coin that can really keep up. You can see the next closest thing is Dogecoin, which is still 17 times slower than Bitcoin. So all that to say, by changing the protocol rules of Bitcoin, you are essentially creating a new coin and you are not uh, you are not changing Bitcoin. You're basically creating some, some trash that probably no one's going to use. So what's something that you can do to help protect the network? Well, in my last video, I talked about Bitcoin, which you need to node. And this is exactly what you could do. So by running a node, you are directly putting yourself into the network here and you're saying, hey, this is my vote. And I say there's only 21 million coins in this network, along with all the other rules that uh, that make up Bitcoin. So by running a node, you are essentially casting your vote and ensuring your own security. If you want to get started with running your own node, but you're not sure where to start, I recommend you start looking at my last video or you just come to my website here and read this post. They're pretty much the same thing. There, I do know there are other companies out there that offer like services where they, they call you and they help you out to set up your node. Um, but um, upon further inspection, they charge like two grand plus to get your node at home. And um, although you are getting really nice hardware, like you're paying $600 for the hardware, um, you can just go ahead and just buy a Raspberry Pi and SSD for about 250 bucks total and um, and just follow the instructions on the MyNode website so you can go ahead and get your node running for under 300 bucks. If you need more help, I do offer consultation services on my website where right now I'm only charging $50 per hour when paid in Bitcoin. Um, so I imagine it'll take you maybe less than two hours to get all set up. So um, yeah, so if you go through this route, you can get a whole node running at home for probably less than 500 bucks. I will be upping my rates later once I start getting more signups since, um, since I'm just getting started, I'm, I'm trying a reduced rate, but um, I am planning on targeting about $100 per hour in the future. So get this while the price is still here. Well, that's all I have. Um, thank you for watching. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. If you want to see something else in particular, please leave a comment and I will consider it. Uh, that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.